Welcome back. In this lesson I'm going to introduce the so-called non-analog Monte Carlo simulations of the neutron transport. That is a big topic, so we will start slowly by looking at the so-called neutron statistical weight. Do you remember the important sampling method? It was one of the general variance reduction technique for Monte Carlo simulations. The important sampling technique altered the original probability density function for the input variable in such a way that the samples of the output variable would be more important to us. So in that way the figure of merit of the simulation, the efficiency, was possible to improve. Now, the non-analog Monte Carlo simulations for neutron transport have the same idea. In non-analog uh, Monte Carlo simulations of the neutron transport, the probability density functions that govern the input random variables are uh, altered. So what are these variables? For instance, the distances between the collisions or the scattering uh, angles. All these uh, variables can be altered. Now, you may wonder why would we want to make a change to the sampling rules for the neutron transport. And the answer to this is to improve the likelihood that the neutron history that we simulate would contribute to our results. Now, imagine such a simple problem. We have a block of material uh, that is uh, absorbing neutrons heavily, so it contains absorber, for instance uh, boron. Then we have a source of neutrons here, and we have a detector on the other side. So let's assume that the source of neutron emits the neutrons isotropically in space, and our task is to calculate the uh, neutron flux in this detector. So the problem here is this thick layer of the absorbing material which absorbs practically all the neutrons. All neutrons that enter into the material from the neutron source will be captured quickly. They may not even uh, scatter around if the absorber is very strong. So you can imagine you may simulate uh, billions or uh, thousands of billions of neutron histories and you will not capture a single neutron in the detector. So uh, how can we possibly solve this problem? One of the solution is to change the sampling rules for the neutron transport. For instance, we may uh, decide that we will no longer simulate the absorption reaction. So when we don't simulate the absorption reaction, then every collision will be scattering. So then the neutron history may actually continue in the material and eventually the neutron may enter the volume of the detector. So we have this method and it's called the implicit capture and we are going to learn about this method in detail in one of the uh, next lessons. There are many other ways how the transport rules can be changed. For instance, we can uh, change the uh, transition kernel that uh, governs the uh, distance between collisions. We can change also the scattering angles. So there are many ways and we are going to learn about a number of them. So if you recall the important sampling method correctly from one of our previous uh, lessons, you may remember that uh, in order to obtain uh, the correct results, we had to apply correction factors to the samples that we generated from the altered uh, probability density functions. So the same we have to do in non-analog Monte Carlo simulations of the neutron transport as well. We have to apply correction factors 
to all the results that we obtain during the non-analog simulations. Right? Every time we change the sampling rules, the probability density functions, we had to compensate the results by applying correction factors to it. So how do we do that? We do it by introducing the so-called neutron statistical weight. So what is the neutron statistical weight? We are going to call it simply the neutron weight and we are going to denote this by W. The neutron weight is an attribute to each neutron history. So each neutron history gets the statistical weight assigned at the very beginning. So the fission neutrons are uh, given the statistical weight. Typically they are given the unit weight at the beginning. And every time when the sampling rule is changed, the correction factor is reflected into the statistical weight. So we basically multiply the statistical weight, the neutron weight with the correction factor. So you may remember the correction factor is basically given by the ratio of the probability density of the original probability density function and the altered probability density function. So all these uh, correction factors go into the neutron weight. So when we change the sampling rules, the correction factor is applied to the neutron weight. And from the neutron weight, all these correction factors will be reflected into the results because all the results and all the outcomes which are tallied during the neutron history simulations are going to be multiplied by the neutron weight. So every time you collect the neutron flux, for instance, you are going to multiply the flux by the corresponding uh, neutron weight of the neutron history. It is also possible to apply the non-analog methods to Monte Carlo criticality simulations. Now you may remember when we learned about the criticality simulations, there was the problem with the source normalization. We had to make sure that the neutron population was constant over the uh, successive cycles, so that even if the system was not critical, we would maintain the neutron population constant. Uh, the problem is, however, that in order to make this normalization, you have to divide all the fission cross-sections by the multiplication factor, which is not known. Now, of course, we can uh, estimate the value of the multiplication factor during the actual Monte Carlo simulation. So this is what we do, however, the result that we get always contains some error. So we either underestimate or overestimate the multiplication factor. So if we overestimate it, then uh, we will sample fewer than necessary uh, number of uh, fission neutrons for the next cycle. If we overestimate the multiplication factor, then we will undersample the number of fission neutrons for the next cycle. However, even if we calculate the multiplication factor correctly, it is not possible to guarantee that we will generate the required number of fission neutrons for the next cycle, because the fission source is a random variable. So as a consequence of this, the number of neutron histories per cycle is not fixed during the criticality calculation. The number of neutron histories actually fluctuates around the required number. And now in case of uh, non-analog Monte Carlo criticality simulations, we can actually improve the source normalization uh, because we have another tool, the weights of the neutrons. So what we can do if we, for instance, uh, generate more than uh, the required number of neutrons for a specific cycle, then we can simply reduce their statistical weight, right? So the statistical weight of the fission neutrons, we can simply uh, reduce it below 1. 
in such a way that the combined statistical weight would equal exactly the required batch size, the number of uh, fission neutrons that we want to have. So in uh, non-analog critically calculations there are actually two procedures uh, for the source normalization. One is the standard uh, division of the fission cross-section by the multiplication factor and the second procedure is the normalization by the statistical weights. And that is all for now. Have a nice day.